Building Information Modeling, or BIM, is a 3D model-based process for designing, constructing, and maintaining buildings. Moving BIM forward requires innovative people as well as innovative technologies. I'm Christine Grail with Leica Geosystems. Here with me today to talk about some of the latest trends in BIM are Sandra Wilkin, President and Founder of Bradford Construction, Kathy Hayes, BIM Business Manager for Leica Geosystems, and Russell Gibbs, who is Regional Director of um, Brassfield and Gorey. So Kathy, let's start with you. Um, you have been a big proponent of BIM as a life cycle process. What exactly does that look like? Sure. Well, Christy, on most projects, BIM stops in the office with pre-construction coordination, period. It just stops there. However, technologically advanced firms, like we have with us today, take BIM further. It's a process that takes BIM out into the field, where you can actually bring information 3D asphalt information from the field back into the office to compare with the model environment and then take the new designs in the office and use it directly for construction layout, replicating the accuracy in the office directly into the field. Now the trick with laying out accurately is making sure that you're progressively scanning throughout the project because as things are built, they're not always built as planned. There are always things that change or are a little different. So it's very important to be scanning, bringing that data back into the model environment, and making those digital and physical adjustments throughout the process so that your iterative process of laying out can be accurate and based on that model. So it's really important to keep both of things in sync, and that's exactly what um, the whole life cycle of BIM is all about. Well, and historically, it's been very difficult to take BIM to the field. And last year, like a Geosystems actually launched the BIM field trip to make that process a lot easier and to enhance the workflows. Can you tell me a little bit about that BIM field trip? Sure, absolutely. The Leica BIM field trip is a set of software and hardware solutions that addresses the 3D as-built-in component as well as the digital layout component. On the as-built-in side, we have a whole host of solutions Depending on the objective of your as-built-in, we can start all the way with high-definition scanning. So with our scan stations, the P20, P15, and C10. So if you have very large jobs where you need to um, very accurately capture a lot of information, very complete information very quickly, then the scan stations are an excellent choice. However, if you have, let's say, um, you've gutted a building and you need to get the critical structural points of that building, just single points of data, heights and widths of things, then you can go with a total station, such as our Icon Robot 50 or 60, or even our interior 3D Disto, where you can go in and collect discrete points of data, many different points from one location, and then compare that back with the model. And then also, if you have a really small job, and you just need single measurements, we have our handheld distos. Or if you need to collect a simple floor plan, maybe for a tenant fit up, you can use our handheld distos and actually measure directly to BIM. So some really, really nice solutions there. Well, and then we have the MS50 too, right? Absolutely, absolutely. You took the words right out of my mouth. We have um, our scanning total station. It's a Leica innovation. It's the only one in the marketplace. Really proud of that innovation and it is a full-fledged total station as well as high-definition scanning all in one. And the real beauty of this instrument is that you can orient and scan multiple scans and they're automatically oriented to your model, to BIM, and also your point clouds are automatically stitched together providing a seamless workflow in and out of the BIM environment. Sandra, Bradford Construction is a recognized leader in BIM. Where has your focus been in BIM recently? Well, uh, it's great to uh, be here at the Hexon uh, and uh, like a conference and uh, just thrilled that we're here from New York. And uh, Christine, the focus of us with BIM is uh, mainly uh, our work in particular uh, is as construction managers and also, uh, as, as a result of that, we also have a digital measurement uh, group. And in particular, on the construction management side, we help minority, small minority, and women-owned business enterprises to advance in technology services. And in particular, our markets are both in the educational, 
health, public markets, and uh, private buildings, and uh, now with the recovery and the rebuild uh, due to uh, Sandy. Uh, the focus that we have with BIM is absolutely all over our projects. And uh, we do this now because we know it's so integral to everything that we have and that we're doing on our projects. It's not just one area that we can concentrate on because of wanting to have the data and the information to be as fast and as accurate as possible. And we, as you uh, mentioned before to Kathy about the, um, <clears throat> the, uh, the multi-station, uh, it is clearly um, the, uh, the best of what we see now. And it has helped us tremendously on our projects. Can you tell me a little bit about how you guys have been using the MS-50 and maybe some of the other technologies that work in conjunction yeah. with that? Uh, we uh, recently are using it uh, down at the uh, at, at area of the World Trade Center and the World Financial Center. Being able to scan, being able to collect data and cloud points, and being able to capture it also uh, by photos is so much easier and quite candidly safer for the people that are working on the projects. Sure, and what other technologies do you find yourself using? I mean, it's, the MS-50 is a great tool, but you must have been using BIM in other ways as well through hardware and software. Oh, sure. Uh, we are currently using BIM uh, for uh, that we see in terms of existing conditions. We do uh, a lot of work with educational facilities, uh, K through 12 and universities. And they are just, just getting in to wanting and adapting, uh, adopting to the BIM process. And in so doing, that when we found ourselves, uh, we're, uh, they are doing uh, BIM for approximately five years. So we're not the early adopters of BIM, but clearly when we realize that our uh, clients and public uh, owners are looking to adopt to BIM, uh, that that is so important for us to understand that we needed to also uh, get more information five years ago about it and to help small businesses understand it so they're not left behind. Uh, it was truly our aha moment. Sure. There's obviously a people component to BIM as well. It's not just the technologies, but it's a people component. And there's a lot of things that are needed in making sure that BIM is successful. What, what do you think is the override, our overriding keys to success in BIM? Uh, clearly, collaboration is the key. And leadership, too. If you have what we see as far as the architects, engineers, but primarily the owners, understanding the need to bring BIM forward on their projects, which often is not necessarily easy to do, and to capture that from the very, very beginning through the entire life cycle of the project. Once the owners understand it, uh, there is a better outcome to be able to work on those projects. And to get not only the architects, the engineers, the general contractors, but the subcontractors, the materials suppliers, everybody there at the initial onset of what needs to be developed. Because it's, as we know, it's a lot less expensive dealing in the virtual world than dealing in a real world and having to deal with delays as a result of perhaps clashes that we encounter in the field. Absolutely. Russ, Brassfield and Gorey has been a leading proponent of BIM as well. Can you tell me a little bit about what you guys are focusing on right now in BIM? Yeah, a lot of the things that we're looking at right now in BIM are just trying to get like a very clear plan early on. So we're receiving a lot of information from design teams and being the GC, we have to accurately understand what we're receiving, how we can use it, and how we can further develop that collaboration with all the trades. And so early on, I guess, what BIM for us was really a marketing tool to present to owners, and we're starting to understand that really it, start, it makes a lot of sense if it gets beyond that. So from marketing into estimating and how we use models to extract quantities, and then now to the field. And so the whole BIM field trip is what we're trying to get at. That's our main focus right now. 
is how do we look at this as a holistic approach to the company to really recreate that process moving forward. What sort of technologies do you see as being key to that approach? Well, right now, there's really two different sides. I mean, there's the creation tools where you've got people in the office that are the creators of content, and then you've really got the extraction of the information. So it's not it's, some of it. Some of it's really hard. Some of it's really easy. So we're seeing as software becomes easier that more people in the company can adopt BIM and then pull the information out of it. So as software becomes easy and the extraction tools are there, then it's growing within our company. Um, so, you know, Revit is a big proponent of what we do, um, and then being able to attach points and then get it to the field so that we can begin to lay out and use a lot of the Leica equipment. We're using the MS-50, we're using the, the Icon 60, we're um, the, uh, I guess, the C10, and then the TS-15 as well. So we're really looking at it from all aspects of using the models and then getting it to the field. So for you, getting it to the field has been really crucial to be able to take that data and move it back and forth. Oh, that's right. I mean, in, in our group in the VDC department, I mean, it's some people view it as a video game when they don't know exactly exactly what it is. And so it really starts to take that level of trust and takes it from a video game mentality to an actual you know, work process. So when I can go up and shine a laser on a building where a duck hanger is going to go before it's there, it all of a sudden mentally the light bulb goes off. Because, oh, that's, that's not just something in a computer. It actually has a physical location and it is what we're about to install. So really that process of getting it to the field is making the light bulb go off with everybody and it makes the field team start to really rely on what's done in the office now. What about the people side? Because there is a, you know, kind of a change in mindset for how you approach the job site when you have this access to the data and this visualization. Definitely, definitely. I mean, it's uh, it, some people take it the wrong way when a person like me or a young computer tech person comes out and wants somebody to look at their job differently. So you have to approach it very delicately and you have to really understand that the people that have been doing it forever still have the information. They still know how buildings go together. And what we're doing is merging a new technology, just a new workflow to help them do their job better and extract the information they have back into the 3D world, virtual world. So it's mainly about trust, collaboration and trust. And once that you obtain trust from the field team, they're really willing to buy in and start to adapt and understand and appreciate what we do in the virtual world. What would you say the overarching keys to success are in BIM? I think the overarching key is just get a plan. You know, understand the, the expectation. You know, make sure that everybody knows what you're trying to get out of the process. And if, if everybody kind of has an unrealistic expectation, it's going to be a failure. Um, so, so really just establishing trust and taking baby steps and just keep moving forward. I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely something that's evolving and we're all trying to get there. But just uh, keep moving forward. And Kathy, you know, from our perspective at Leica Geosystems, that's what it's really about is enabling that success story in BIM, right? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So, and that's what we're all about. We're all about connecting together workflows, digital workflows from the office and the field and back again. And our solutions really do help to get BIM to the field and bring the field into BIM. And these are very important factors for construction companies to increase predictability, increase profitability, and lower risk. So we feel like that the Leica solutions really are key for construction firms to come into the te technological age and really improve um, the way that they practice today. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. From HXGen Live in Las Vegas, I'm Christine Grail with Leica Geosystems. Thank you for watching.